So it's been around 24 hours since the tragic shooting at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. And there's been a lot of divisive comments here on YouTube. There's been a lot of divisiveness within the press. There's been a lot of speculation. And what I wanted to do was try to look at this objectively and say, as it stands 24 hours later, what is known? And I'm going to use information from both political agendas, you might say, in the press. So CNN, Fox. But I'm going to try to get through the weeds surrounding what do we know as to what occurred to make you better informed. So I want to start off by talking about the status of the child. And when I reflect on the last 24 hours, my prayers have been for this young child. And initially, the reports were saying that this child was three or four years old. Now we know that this child is seven years old, and it is the son of the suspect. And he is still currently fighting for his life, having been shot in the head. So if I ask you to do anything after this video, would you say a prayer for this young child that is caught up in such trauma uh, such a trouble incident. Would you please pray for this young child if you do anything after this video? Because for all the research I've done, this is where I keep coming back to that there is a seven year old child fighting for his life, caught up in the world's brokenness, and no child deserves that. The next thing I want to talk about is the motive. There's been lots of speculation online about what is the motive. This is a comment. Only today from the Houston police chief saying it's still too early. Yes, there's a lot of information about anti-Semitism. There's a lot of information about Jewish comments that might have been made, but they're still saying it is too early. Now, what is becoming known is there was some type of family dispute between the assailant and the ex-husband. More will come out for that, but there is some type of dispute. And the ex-husband's family, and I believe the ex-husband maybe himself, were Jewish as well, hence a lot of anti-Semitism statements which are starting to come out. And a statement here, again, from Houston police, saying they do believe there was some type of familial dispute that had taken place through the ex-husband and her ex-husband's family who were Jewish. So still too early to say what the motivation for this was, but there is some type of dispute that is known between the families. And we have a statement from the Harris County judge that said, I will not make any assumptions because information continues to come in as to what motivated the shooter. But I am asking that the investigation look into whether it was a hate crime. And we know there was anti-Semitism uh, comments that have been made. And we're going to talk about that in a few moments. So still a little bit earlier sources saying. Now, the weapon used was an AR-15. We know that it had this Palestine sticker down the side. Much has been said about that in reports. It was also a second 22 caliber rifle. We know that the assailant purchased these firearms legally um, only as recently as December. So as we record this in February, it could be less than six or seven weeks the assailant purchased these guns. More to come on that, bearing in mind the criminal history that this person had. Mental health has come out, and the police have said that the suspect had a mental health history uh, documented through interviews with family. And apparently in 2016, the assailant was put under a detention order. So as with a lot of these cases that we see, trauma and abuse, uh, there's always a mental illness within these cases as well. And this dates back to uh, so sort of seven years prior. As we look at the motivation in this case, which is still unclear, what we do know is that there is anti-Semitism. There was a dispute with her ex-husband and in-laws that are Jewish. More to come in the days, the weeks, the months ahead. But what I want to remind us is outside of our theology, our theology also drives some views on abortion transgender, gay marriage, immigration. There are extremist groups on both sides, pro-abortion, anti-abortion, pro-transgender, anti-transgender. 
You support gay marriage. You don't support gay marriage. You have concerns and views on immigration in the U.S. All these targeted risks we have because of our theology. So what's really important after today is that we understand we always have this targeted risk. And in today's modern world, there are more extreme groups on both sides which could attack us for our religious beliefs. So what I want us to do from today is review the risk to your church. Review your church emergency plan and then review what you can learn from this incident. That is how we will move forward. We always have heightened risks in the house of worship because of our theology, because of some of our beliefs. What we have now are more extremist groups that persecute us because of those religious beliefs. So moving forward here today, let's know and believe that any one of our churches could be a victim of violence such as this. But... We're not going to be alarmists. We're going to be sensible, but we are going to review the risk to your church. We are going to review our emergency operations plan. We are going to review what we can learn from this incident so we can move forward and stay safe. So I just wanted to come in and share some of my views. As I mentioned, there's been a lot of, maybe not misinformation, but there's been a lot of information coming out. And it's hard to work through the weeds to find out well, what is true, what is factual, what should we believe. So I just tried to pull together for you what is known right now. And again, more will come out in the weeks, months ahead. Um, but for now, you stay safe. You have a blessed day. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.